than personal, kid. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be doing a loadout video for the gun that Gucci Gun Guy Chads fear the most, and that is the SKS. And it's not because the SKS is, you know, the most potent weapon on the planet or that it's better than most other rifles out there because I do believe that there are many rifles that are better than the SKS in many regards out there and have been out for a long time but it's because of the shame of possibly having your story ended by a poor or a bubba using one of these things hopefully not in a super cursed variation of it which bubba does love to do and if you can imagine your post-mortem after action report as you're looking down from heaven or up from hell and seeing your lifeless dripped out body being stripped clean uh, by said poor or Bubba of all of your you know, priceless belongings. And it's almost like a fate worse than what got you there in the first place. And I guess um, it would even be more shameful if you got taken out by like a guy using a Mosin or like a double barrel shotgun. But to me, the SKS is one of those rifles that it's like just good enough to justify bringing out with you into like a, like a combat environment. And for a lot of people, the SKS is just good enough. I mean, at least for them, especially if they're one of these people that bought one of these rifles back in the day when it was like, 200 bucks definitely not the case these days uh don't want to say exactly how much i paid for this this is not like a russian sks this is a yugoslavian sks you can tell by the muzzle device here at the end which is meant for launching grenades and then the grenade launcher sight right here but i want to say that i paid north of 800 bucks for this which really loses its uh potential as like your starter gun or like the gun that you buy when you're a poor college kid or just a broke ass motherfucker but i bought this gun just for fun you know like i didn't buy this thing out of necessity <laughs> um you know i like to train with a bunch of different guns um you know i don't like to just stick to like modern mag fed uh, semi auto rifles sometimes i like to bring out these you know older rifles um because i think clint smith says it best is that like who says that the rifle you'll be fighting with in the future will be the rifle that you have currently. So, you know, sometimes I like to bring out some old surplus rifles and honestly, guys, um, shooting these things is just the best. You know, with the wood stock and the iron sights, it's like it's like free range shooting, you know? <laughs> like shooting without all the added preservatives of like, you know, polymer and M-lock and, you know, optical sights. It's just really nice getting out to the range and using something like this. It's a much more earthy shooting experience. <laughs> and going back to the price on these things, you know, if you're going to pay $800 or more for a rifle like this, um, I really would not recommend picking up an SKS as your starter rifle these days, you know, as a poor college kid, because for 800 bucks, you might as well pick up something like a, uh, like a PSA AK, like a AK-103 would be a really good choice, or like a AK-104, like you see here. Um, I think that something like this would give you all the benefits that the SKS could possibly give you, but do it uh, much better. <laughs> I think you'll be much better off picking up something like a PSA AK as a, you know, your first, you know, starter rifle because the price is kind of there. You might pay a little bit more for this and then you have a lot more aftermarket parts and accessories to upgrade it um, in the future without completely ruining the gun that you originally had. <laughs> but if you are one of those guys that still mains an SKS or a guy like me who picked one up just for fun and want to LARP around at the range and train with it and you know want some kit to go along with it, eh, this video might be for you. If nothing else, it's just for fun. But before we get into it, guys, today's video is sponsored by EuroOptic. EuroOptic is a great website, which if you can't tell by the name, 
They sell optics, all your favorite brands, Trigicon, Vortex, Aimpoints, um, Night Force, pretty much any brand you can think of. And unlike other websites that have optic in their name, what they say they have in stock is actually what they have in stock, which to me is really cool. So go check them out, links in the description, and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Also make sure to go check out Slate Black Industries, use code BJO10 for 10% off some sick Emlock grips and accessories. Before we talk about the kit, let's talk about the gun a little bit. So the SKS was developed in 1945 by the Soviet Union as a means to replace their main fighting rifle, but it was quickly uh, swapped out for the AK-47, which I do think was a great choice as far as like equipping your, your army with a main fighting rifle. I think the AK provides a lot more than what the SKS does, but that doesn't mean that the SKS didn't see any service after that or combat. It was then shifted off to like rear echelon troops and then to conscript forces um, across the world. And the plans for this thing were also given to pretty much all the communist countries. That's why you see uh, versions of these made by, you know, uh, Yugo, like Yugoslavia, China, many others. And honestly, um, as far as like outfitting a conscript force or like your local farmers and stuff, I think the SKS is really not a bad choice. Um, because contrary to what this whole video is about, you know, kit, you really do not need anything to run this gun effectively. You don't need any kit at all. Uh, essentially all you need is pockets to hold loose rounds. And I'm assuming even dirty commies have pockets. That is if their child slaves decided to sew them into their pants. You really don't need anything. All you need is just feed this gun via loose rounds in your pocket, which is great. Or if you're really high speed, you can get stripper clips. Um, you know, I'd highly recommend investing in good stripper clips for this thing. I kind of got crummy ones, I think. I, got, I bought them off Amazon and I had a few problems where, you know, I would pull one out and then there'd be a round missing because they came off the stripper clip and sometimes they were kind of hard to feed into the gun. Um, I kind of got the technique down, but I've heard, I, I know Grantham says it in his SKS video that you really want good stripper clips for this thing, which go in right here and then you can just push the rounds in that way. So if you are one of those high speed SKS chads that actually has stripper clips, um, a great chest rig to go with the SKS is none other than the Type 63 SKS chest rig. <laughs> um, this chest rig to me is one of the best investments in gear you can make for almost anybody. And let me explain. So if you're an SKS gunner, obviously, um, get the SKS chest rig and you can find these things on Amazon. I picked this Type 63 surplus Chinese chest rig up for 20 bucks and had it shipped right to my door, no problem. And as you can see here, you have one, two, three, four, five uh, mag pouches right here. And then you have two side pouches right here, which are a little bit smaller. And these hold either an oil bottle or grenades. I use these to hold other things uh, like a multi-tool right here. I always carry multi-tool on me um, even more than I take this, use this as a priority over like a fighting knife. I'm not really a knife guy, I'm not opposed to using one, but I'm always making sure that I carry multi-tool on me because um, I use these like 99 times more than I would a fighting knife, but I'm not opposed to using one. Don't bite my head off, um, but multi-tool always a good thing to have on your kit. And then these pouches right here also can hold a radio. So as you can see in this, I have my Baofeng radio on here with the Disco 32 PTT. Um, so far, this has been working good. Um, we'll see how it goes after a few Milsom West games when it's been out in the field. As far as these uh, pouches right here, these clip pouches, uh, you can hold, you can shove three stripper clips in here with 10 rounds at each stripper clip. Wouldn't really recommend it, especially if you use, I don't know, maybe it's not an issue if you run really good stripper clips, but I found that if I ran three in here and yanked one out, it would usually yank out another stripper clip with it, or it would get snagged and rip the rounds off of the other stripper clips and you would pull out those and then you'd only have like, you know, seven or eight rounds in each stripper clip. So would recommend only holding uh, two stripper clips per pouch. Um, again, maybe if you run better stripper clips than I did, you won't have the issue. 
But what I really love about this chest rig is that you can modify it so easily. So let's say that you start off with an SKS, you start off as the SKS gunner, and then you graduate into either an AK or an AR-15 guy, and you still have this chest rig, fear not, because these things are super easy to modify to be excellent chest rigs for either 5.56 mags or AK mags. All you have to do is either tuck these uh, flaps right here in or just cut them completely off and run the STAC Kiwi mag inserts inside of here, the plastic inserts that come inside of STAC Kiwi mag pouches. Those, the high ones, don't get the mid or the lows, get the high uh, inserts, because those fit in there perfectly. Get a little bit of tape or some Velcro inside of there just so they stick in there perfectly. And then you have a great open top um, you know, mag chest rig. Or you can get the bungees and send off your this thing off to guys like Hub City Outdoors. I have another one of these things that I made into a placard for my slick plate carriers. It's really cool. It's running the bungees, but I really do prefer the uh, STAC Kiwi inserts inside of these. So really good investment. Um, highly recommend, even if you're not an SKS guy and you just want a chest rig for your AR-15 or your AK, Get one of these things, buy a few of those inserts, and you have yourself an excellent chest rig. Another thing you can do to these is that, so that Type 63, kind of like the Type, oops, Type 56 has these, um, just these, <laughs> these little straps or whatever you want to call them um, that you just tie off in your back to secure it. I'd recommend getting just like a buckle of some sort, weaving it through, and then making yourself a little like a clip on the back. That way it's just easier to put off and on. Super easy to do. Um, buy those things anywhere and again highly recommend getting one of these chest rigs so moving up to the comm setup here um, i forgot to mention is that a lot of these things in this loadout are budget friendly minded because i'm assuming that if you're maining an sks you're probably poor or <laughs> money's an issue and you know make no exception for the comm setup so i got a question the other day about a budget friendly um, headset with ear protection and what i've been running and i've been running these for a while i bought these a while ago these are from a company called earmore if you've seen those little um, electronic earbuds that you sometimes see me wear in videos same brand um, so far i've seen their stuff to be pretty good uh, especially for the price this headset is about 60 bucks and then you get yourself kind of peltor performance um it's definitely not as clear as peltors but it's definitely still usable um it also works well with comms help yourself it fits in the nato um three pin or uh, is that what these are called whatever they are um Works great. Uh, I've been using these as like a backup uh, comm situation whenever I go to Milsom West if I'm not re wearing my helmet. Because I do like to have um, hearing protection on me because tag-in rounds are loud as fuck and I don't want to lose my hearing playing airsoft. But yeah, these are really good if you want a kind of budget-friendly comms situation. All right, moving over to one of the last pieces of kit, um, this day pack. This is the Wartech Gamut uh, day pack or assault pack, whatever you want to call it. This is so far my favorite day pack or assault pack. I bought this with my own money. Wartech did not send this to me. I bought this about a year ago for my first Nilsson West event. And this thing is great. Um, it, to me, it's just the perfect size for a typical little day pack. Um, nothing too fancy on it. it has two outside zipper po um, pockets right here which I store inside, you know, batteries and stuff like that. Right now I have a AK sighting tool. And, you know, also in this main compartment here, nothing too fancy. I mean, I've got a bunch of random shit in here. I got like a rain jacket and uh, my hydration in here. So I have three liters of water and then you just have this big ass pouch right here, which you could store whatever you want in there. Oh, a little speed loader in the bottom. <laughs> and, you know, to me, this backpack has just been great. Uh, Wartex not... Paying. I know I've reviewed a lot of Wartech products, but this one I bought myself a while ago, and it's also an ATAX FG, which is my favorite camo. I think it's awesome, and just a great little day pack, and it's been serving me well. That's about it, guys, for this SKS loadout video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I just want to say, just like Grantham always says, get out there and train, because I fear the guy who trains every day 
with one of these rifles and then a dude who buys the most dripped out rifle on the planet with all the fancy gear and the night vision for just to stay in their closet because you don't want all that stuff to be taken away from you by a dude wielding one of these bad boys right here. <laughs> but again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Gene Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch which helps support the channel. Also make sure to hit that notification bell just so you can keep up to date whenever I decide to post a new video. But that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you guys next time.